I just cut this piece of material down to a workable size. So the next step in the square up process is to joint a face and then joint an edge. What that's going to do is it's going to remove the warp. If I set my board on this nice true flat surface on my jointer bed and I go and rock the board, you can see that it's not sitting tight against the bed. That's telling me that there's warp to it. So the whole purpose of the jointer here is to remove that warp and make it a nice true flat surface. So let's get the jointer set up to surface my face. First of all, the fence here is too close to my guard. The board's not going to be able to get through. So we need to adjust the fence. It's real easy to do. All we're going to do is unlock it from the bed right here and then slide it back. Make sure we have enough room to get our board through. And when you have the fence where you want it, just lock it back in place. This handle over here is going to adjust the fence. So we can take a square, put it on the fence, and check to make sure that there's no uh, uneven amount of light coming through the blade of my square. So it's all nice and even right here that's telling me that the fence is square. Then, since we're jointing a face, what we're going to do is use our push blocks. We have a 4-inch safety clearance on the, on the joiner, so that means I can't have my hands anywhere near this cutter head here. Okay? So as long as I'm holding push blocks, you're going to be okay. So I'm going to put one push block in front, the other in the back. I'm going to give it consistent pressure all the way across the blade until I'm through and I make my cut. Then I want to check my depth of cut. The maximum depth of cut on the joiner is an eighth of an inch. That's recommended whenever we're doing the edges. When we're doing larger surface area like on a face, I would suggest using a smaller depth of cut. So to adjust it, if you want to get smaller or bigger depth of cut, what we're going to do is unlock this knob here and this one right here. Then we can take this handle and adjust the infeed table down or up, depending on what we need. So I'm going to shoot for about a sixteenth or so inch depth of cut right now. And when I have it where I want it, I can lock both of these knobs again. And it's all set. So right here it's going to tell me my depth of cut right on that gauge. So I just adjusted my in-feed table. I never want to touch my out-feed table. This one should never be adjusted by any students. It's okay for students to adjust the in-feed table, but I'm the only person that is going to change our out-feed table. Because if this table is not calibrated correctly, you're going to have problems jointing your material. Okay, so our machine is set. Now we want to check our material and make sure that it's long enough. You need to have a minimum of 10 inches of material in order to run it through on the joiner. So I'm over 14 inches, so I'm good there. Okay, so the last thing to do is get some push blocks in hand since I'm jointing my face. Okay, our push blocks are going to go on the face of the material. And as long as you're holding your push blocks, you're okay to run it over the cutter head. Okay? You never want to run, move your hands within 4 inches of this cutter head. Okay, so as long as you're holding push sticks or push blocks, you're okay. okay. So we're all set to run our material. We're going to open up our blast tape, turn on the machine, and give a nice consistent pass over the cutter head. After one pass, it might not be enough. It probably cut just a little bit. So you can hold it up to the light and you can kind of tell where uh, the jointer head actually cut material. I'm going to give it another couple of passes until this face is completely flat and has been cut with the jointer. So I'll give it a couple more passes. Now if I look at my board I can tell that everything has been cut 
the surface is flat and true. Okay, so we just jointed the face. The next step is to joint the edge. So I'm going to take my jointed face. That's going to go up against my fence. And then I can joint my edge square to this face since the fence is square to the table. Since the board is above the height of the fence, you don't need to use a push stick. You can, but it's not necessary because this is your four inch safety clearance right here. If you take your hands and you curl them up into a fist, this is the best way to kind of prevent your fingertips from getting into that safety clearance and getting close to the cutter head here. Okay, so I'm going to roll my fingers in into fists, keep my hands well away from the cutter head, and I'm going to joint this edge. Again, if you can see some rough material here yet, and you know that the cutter head did not cut that, you can give it another pass. So now I see that the cutter head has cut my the edge all the way all the way down, so I can take my square put it against the face, drop it down onto the edge, then I can check to make sure that it's square. Okay? So when a piece is wide enough and it's above the fence, you don't need your push sticks. But what happens if you're jointing material that is lower than the height of the fence? Well, in this case, we're going to use our push stick. So I'm going to use this push stick instead of my hands here. I'm going to use my push block to hold it tight to the fence, and then I can get an edge squared to the face. So I jointed a face, and I jointed an edge. I did not joint an end. You never want to joint end grain. For a couple reasons. One, most of the time your end grain doesn't provide you with a 10 inch length of material. Okay, This is only about 6 inches. It's not going to stay stable across both these tables in order to give you a nice straight uh, end. The other problem with end grain is that when I, if I did do this and it came through, it doesn't cut the end grain very clean and it's probably going to chip out this back edge on you. Okay, so there's a couple reasons that we never joint end grain. We only joint face and edge grain. Now once you're done using the machine, please close the blast gate, put your push sticks back, and leave it clean for the next person.